Welcome to James Madison's Montpelier, which is in Orange County, Virginia. Today, we are going to be taking a look inside the home of the father of the Constitution and fourth president of the United States. So join us for another Lesson on the Road. The first space we're going to visit here at James Madison's Montpelier is the South Passage. The South Passage would have been the entrance to the original house that was completed in 1765. The numerous paintings that you see hanging on the walls here in this passage were brought to Virginia by Dolly Madison's son, Payne Todd, after his time in Europe. Also hanging on the wall here in the South Passage is a relief of James Madison's mother, one of the very few images we have of Nellie Conway Madison. We are standing in the drawing room, which was frequently used by the Madisons for entertaining guests. The striking appearance of the room, as well as the elaborate furnishings, are quick to catch your eye as you move through the mansion. An astute commentator of her day, Margaret Smith, once described the room in 1828 as having the appearance of a museum of the arts. The Madisons heavily utilized this area during the retirement period. The room saw many notable guests through the years, including frequent visitors Thomas Jefferson and James Monroe. The room has many artifacts that reflect some of James Madison's most significant accomplishments, including his work in helping secure religious freedom, the drafting of the Constitution, and his two-term presidency. The work of some of the most well-known artists of the period is seen on the walls of the drawing room. Gilbert Stuart portraits of Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, and James and Dolly Madison can be seen, as well as a John Vanderlyn portrait of James Monroe. The drawing room still has an original work on display today a 17th century painting titled Pan, Youth, and Nymphs by artist Garrett von Honthorst. Near the drawing room, guests would find this dining room, which was home to many magnificent feasts. Visitors here said that this space could accommodate anywhere from 15 to 20 guests easily. Here, magnificent meals were served to all those who came to visit James Madison, the Sage of Montpelier. Most notably, Andrew Jackson dined here as he navigated the nullification crisis, and the Marquis de Lafayette, on his 1824 tour of America, dined here at Montpelier. No doubt that the Marquis pointed out the obvious contradictions between liberty and slavery. After dinner, men would linger here in the dining room and discuss the topics of the day, politics, crops, and trade. Madison's enslaved servants had access to this room through outside stairs so they could bring food and wine from the cellar to the dining room. An inventory of the contents of this room was done shortly after Madison's death in 1836. That inventory has been incredibly helpful to the curators here at Montpelier, who continually search for the tables, the china, the silverware, the artwork that James Madison would have enjoyed during his lifetime. Archaeologists have also discovered a midden, basically a trash heap, about 200 yards to the north of the house near the old kitchen. The midden was created by Madison's enslaved laborers as they threw out broken china or anything else that was worn out or any old debris that just wasn't wanted. This midden has provided many fragmentary treasures that help provide clues to what exactly was in this dining room. This room is known as the New Library and was under construction from 1809 to 1812. Although it was originally intended to be a library, it was later turned into a bedroom. You might be asking yourself, why did James Madison need his own library? It's because he loved books, and at the time of his death, he owned thousands of them. Close to his love of books, however, was his love of maps, and you can see this from the detailed maps that proudly hang in this room. Perhaps the most historically significant part of this room is that this is where the papers of James Madison were organized, including his notes from the Constitutional Convention. As the tobacco prices plummeted, the Madisons needed a way to make some cash, and the plan was developed to collect, organize, and sell the papers of James Madison's life. As you can imagine, this was a lengthy, time-consuming process, and Madison continued to work on this up until his death in 1836. Before he became president, James Madison used the center upstairs room as his library. This old library was possibly used by his father as his library in the original house. It was here in this space that James Madison, in the spring and summer of 1786, researched previous attempts at self-government prior to the Constitutional Convention. Some of the books used by Madison during this time were sent to him from France from his friend Thomas Jefferson. This room has a magnificent view of the western Blue Ridge Mountains, and it's in this room that James Madison thought, read about, and created a constitutional democracy, a Republican form of government that still works to this very day. This room in Montpelier is called the Restoration Room. It's left unfinished. It's here to show visitors how staff 
have restored the home in a period correct manner. Most modern homes today use a type of drywall for all interior spaces. But as early as the colonial era in North America, a lath and plaster wall was very common. In fact, plaster walls were installed through much of the 20th century. When done correctly, a plaster wall can be very durable. Once you frame a house and let it sit for a while, the house itself and the frame will move and twist over time, what's called settling. So you need a material on your interior walls that will do the same thing. And that's where plaster comes in. Let's take a look at the parts of a plaster wall. So off my left shoulder here, we have these thin strips of wood. Those are called lath. And they're laid about a quarter inch apart from each other. After the carpenter has nailed the lath to the frame, they would have come in with a paste-like material we call plaster that would have been made of chalk, limestone, and horsehair. That's right, horsehair. They would have taken the material with some kind of a trowel or spade and pushed it and smeared it across the lath. They would have had it pushed pretty hard because the objective was to lay an even coat, but also push some of the material through the quarter inch gap. In doing so, they create these keys or kind of hooks on the back side of the wall. That's what keeps the plaster on the wall. The plaster is tacky when it's wet, but it, it loses its stickiness once it dries. When done correctly, plaster walls can be very, very durable and last a long time. There's something else in this reconstruction space that I want to show you, but to do that, we have to go off the wall. Rats. Probably not something you want to find when you're restoring a house. However, the restoration specialists here at Montpelier were likely pleased to find evidence of pack rats. Because true to their nature, pack rats do tend to use anything they can find to build a nest. Things like scraps of wallpaper, letters, upholstery, anything restoration specialists can use to paint a more complete picture of Montpelier. Welcome to Mr. Madison's room. During the final year of his life, this room was converted to James Madison's study. It was here that he would sit and rest. In this space, James Madison continued to organize his papers after he was confined to bed. During this time period, Madison continued to meet with notable visitors. On June 28, 1836, James Madison passed away in this room. He was surrounded by the books and the papers that meant so much to him during his life. His enslaved servant, Paul Jennings, and his niece, Nellie, were with him at the time of his death. James Madison's last words were nothing more than a change of mind, my dear. On June 29, 1836, the day after he passed away, James Madison's body was carried to the Madison Family Cemetery here on the grounds at Montpelier. Today, James Madison's grave is marked by a tall obelisk made of James River granite. Thanks for joining us for another lesson on the road. So next time you're looking to do something historical, a bit scientific, and just all around nerdy, come check out James Madison's Montpelier and everything it has to offer. That's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. We'll see you next time for another lesson on the road. Where do we park? I don't know, but I don't want to cut this long. I think you ever thought about getting turf? I forget where I should start. The room has many artifacts that that. Oh man, what is that word? The room has many artifact. The room. <laughs> you notice the glasses on top of the lens? That's so I know where to look. I should have asked. Which camera I'm looking at? This one. Okay, I try that again. Close to his love of books, however, were his love of maps, and you can note. Oh man, close to take Gimby. During the final years year of his life, this space became was. Do my I I don't only have I don't have a script I'm just winging this one. In this time, in this space, James Madison can, can In this space, James Madison continued to organize his paper. Oh my gosh. Over my right, I'll tell you, I have allergies too. I'm allergic to planet Earth apparently. Yeah. I just took a fistful of allergy pills this morning, which is better living through chemistry. In science. <laughs> <laughs> Better living through chemistry. Anyway.